Hello and welcome to our series of devotions as we continue following the Stay Alert to the Spirit series. We are reflecting this week on prophetic challenge. Today is Wednesday, the 10th of February. As we begin, let us still ourselves in a moment of quiet before God. And our prayer for this week. Lord Jesus Christ, you challenged those corrupted by power and you suffered and died at their hands. Help us to follow in your footsteps, bearing the sword of the Spirit of Truth and daily lifting up the shield of faith. Amen. The reading today is Isaiah chapter 49, verses 1 to 6. Listen to me, O coastlands. Pay attention, you peoples from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, You are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have laboured in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord, and my reward with my God. And now the Lord says, Who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honoured in the sight of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, Is it too light a thing that you should be my servant? to raise up the tribes of Jacob, and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Speaking up and speaking out is no easy task. The, the, all the major prophets had their challenges. I mean, Ezekiel had to eat food that was cooked on a fire made with dung. Originally it was human dung, and he said, I'm not going to defile myself like that, Lord. And so he had to use animal dung. I don't know what's worse. And he had other challenges, like lying on his side for 300 days. Jeremiah was told, you're going to speak to the people, but they're not going to listen. And even Isaiah, uh, in his calling in uh, chapter 6, talks about how he has to tell the people, don't listen. I'm going to tell you lots of things about God's, what God's saying, but don't listen to them. But you see, in spite of all that, the rulers and the people needed to hear what God was saying. And the same is no less true for today. In this passage, we see a servant being described. You could read ahead and link all the things here mentioned to Jesus. He fulfills everything written in this passage. He was called before he was born. He was named in the womb. His mouth was like a sharp sword to lots of people who listened and didn't want to hear. He was God's servant, Israel. Or we should say he was everything that Israel should have been, but wasn't. His whole ministry was to bring God's people back to, to him. He was the light given to the nations, that God's salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. What's amazing is that this doesn't just apply to Jesus. This goes for his followers today. It means for you and for me. It applies to, to, to us all. It means, just think about it. We've been called by name. We've been called before we were born. God has given us the light of Christ to bring salvation to the ends of the earth. That's what we're supposed to be. So, while it may be no easy task to speak up and to speak out, it's okay because we've been chosen for the job. God's given us all that we need. Our words can pierce the darkness and bring light to all who hear. We don't have to be someone from some great lineage or famous or rich or have some kind of platform to preach from. Jesus didn't have any of those. Jesus wasn't any of those things. But he managed to bring salvation to the world. The invitation of this passage is clear. Carry the light of Christ to the world. The challenge for us, however, is to believe that God has given us all we need and to do what he's called us to do. 
The world needs the church, needs believers, of followers of Jesus to speak up and to speak out. The question that remains for us is, will we? We'll spend a few moments reflecting on these things for ourselves. What are the difficulties you have with speaking up and speaking out? How does it make you feel that Jesus fulfills all the promises of this passage and that, in turn, so do we as his followers? What might you do to help you believe the truth about who you are every day, which will help you to speak up and speak out? Spend some time with God now. Give him any worries or insecurities about speaking up and speaking out. Ask him to fill you afresh with his Holy Spirit, that you might be empowered to be all he's called you to be.
and a blessing for us as we finish. May the Holy Spirit anoint us today, blow life into our dry bones, melt our hard hearts, enable us to be good news to the poor and restore the kingdom life on earth. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us now and always. Amen.